So yeah. they've got a gym at Powerlink. Yeah, and it's okay. like four bucks a week. Oh, fuck yeah. Yeah, I know, right? I love that. It's like uni when it yeah. was just like, when uni and it was ripping people like, off. Like, literally, my f- like the floor I worked on, I had to walk down the stairs and past it yeah. to go home. Nice. So there was no reason to yeah. not do it. I found reasons, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> there was no legitimate reason. So, yeah, and I just joined a local 24 outfit gym now. Yeah, so, okay. Yeah, yeah. So. Don't worry, I, I still find reasons. I've got my whole garage as a gym. I've enjoyed watching your gym videos <laughs> and going, man, that's a good setup. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good setup. Yeah. yeah. And I'm lucky that my personal trainer literally lives an eight minute walk away from my house. Oh, really? Yeah, because so. I, I was talking about like business stuff. Yeah, so like, we're oh, talking about cool. heaps. Like, yeah. we're going to do some courses and stuff. Like, process mapping? <laughs> oh, yeah, just like, you should document your shit at work. And Mate, he's just I like, I feel this. <laughs> yeah. I feel this. Because he, he's kind of, um, so his partner helps out with some of his business. Yep. But he wants to expand and get a commercial space. And I was just like, document all your shit. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Because yeah. then you don't have to answer dumb questions. Yeah, I, I would always joke in the railway. It's like, I haven't got time to write things down because I'm constantly putting on whiteboards to explain it to people. And there's a point where you're like, if, if I've just had to read explain this, this three times, yeah. And I loved your comment on like, yeah, I had to do this thing and then I found it and I did it in like five minutes and it just saved. Oh, so much pain when I, and stress. Yeah, yeah, when I'd come back to that job yeah. and found my own documentation, yeah. and I, was I was like, like oh, fuck yes. Yeah. Desi. Yeah. <laughs> Desi, I feel you. You know, um, that's why I love OneNote. Yeah. You can just search so much shit in OneNote. Yeah. It's so good. Everyone uses um, Confluence, though. But it, it's the yeah. same. Like, OneNote and Confluence are both the same thing, is that it's, it requires information management. Yes, knowledge so management. You, yeah. So you have different versions of the same thing. Yep. But it, yep never gets cleaned up or yeah, archived. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going through that problem yeah. now at work. I've actually been getting into Bing has a work search API. Okay. So if you go to bing.com yeah. and type in like whatever, at the top there's a box for work. And if you click that, it'll search OneNote, Google, sorry, um, uh, OneDrive, SharePoint. Okay. Like just all the Microsoft stuff, yeah, which is okay. awesome because you know, I'm in a new job. I'm yeah. like, where is this thing? Oh, it's in here. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, well, I, don't know, I guess we're warmed up if we want to start. Yeah, yeah. So, welcome all to the Hardly Adequate podcast. You guys wouldn't have seen this, but I've already interviewed Bruce. Uh, we decided Mark to do, yeah, Mark too. <laughs> we decided to do a pub, which was a bad idea because it was way too noisy. Uh, the pub was good, though. The pub was good. The food was really good. Yeah. The conversation was really good. Yeah, we're going to have to just remember what we said. Oh, I, I didn't even go back and look. We need more pub. beers. <laughs> That's what's in the coffee cup. <laughs> Whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> but today we're outside of Goma in Brisbane, which is a modern modern art yeah, gallery. Gallery of yeah. modern art, yeah. Um, and we're right on the river, so it's a bit quieter, a bit nicer. But yeah. The brown snake's looking good today. <laughs> I have seen lizards jumping around everywhere. Ah, right? yeah, yeah. So, well, if we're taken, yeah, <laughs> that'll be <yeah>. evidence. <laughs> so, but for anyone if you're interested in getting more jump on my discord you can get the link from my website hardlyadequate.com but welcome again to the podcast yeah, and thank you for Desi. redoing I, you'll now be my second that I have to redo because my other one corrupted with um, Jaeger I don't know whether you know oh, him he works no. for I think Sentinel One yeah right yeah. yeah I feel like we need to do a um, audio check <laughs> 15 minutes in. I think we're good. I checked on the, the audio, so I think, oh, I think we're all right. Famous yeah. last words. <laughs> nah, Otherwise, good, we'll just be doing this again. <laughs> Third, Third time's time. the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. Because I think last time we were just talking about background, how we got into security, right? Yeah, so like these ones are just how you got in. So like my first yeah, yeah. question is always like, what's a normal day like for you? And this uh, is new for you because you're is. in a brand new job now. Yeah, yeah. I think it's... um. It's my fourth week. So yeah, yeah I've recently just moved to uh, Sokolv as a principal OT cybersecurity architect and chief evangelist, which is very cool. Um, so I get to do some technical I imagine you like, you're touching people's heads and they're fainting. Like, uh, brothers say, and sisters, yeah. <laughs> we're here to talk about OT yeah. security. Yeah, no, um, ba- basically uh, Leif, uh, CEO and uh, founder of Sokolv is like, hey, Bruce, I just want you to BFL <laughs> and uh, we'll pay you to BFL. So here I am. And um, yeah, it's been really good, but yeah, so very different change. I used to be at PowerLink, OT cybersecurity mm. team leader, uh, which was like a, a blue team, security operations, uh, security architecture, and like in-house role. And now I'm back in consulting. Yeah. So I'm on, I think it's about five or six projects, doing pre-sales, 
uh, but still focusing security architecture, security operations. Um, it's, it's been really good, yeah. So, and I think kind of like, there's probably, probably this difference of, you know, plan, build, run. Yeah. So I'm probably more back into plan and build, mm. whereas previously I've worked on run. So run, security operations, uh, daily triage, daily investigations, those kind of things. Yeah. Versus now more, you know, projects, workshops, understanding what people are trying to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Or the um, like, what do you have in your network you should put in monitoring? And yeah. Plan, oh, plan and, and build that into Asset projects. management, yeah. as, you, as we would both know, yeah. sounds easy, very difficult. Mm. Um, and... I guess, you know, we were just chatting before around like documentation. Yeah. So helping, yeah, you know, I've heard this term, it's like the tyranny of documentation. So find that right level of doco that's useful, but not doco for the sake of doco. Oh yeah. Yeah, which yeah. is real, it's a real, it's an art. It's, yeah. yeah. And good tech writers, super valuable. Yes. So yeah. if you have a good tech writer, make sure you show them some love and appreciate them. Yeah. I can definitely understand that. Like my, where I work, now the engineers are amazing. Yep. But they're not very good at writing documentation for people other than engineers. I exactly. And, and so it's, it's an art yeah. to translate that because other people do need to read their technical documentation. 100%. And it can save a lot of time. Yeah. Um, you know, kind of like conveying intent. Also, just checking, this is on? Yeah. Yeah, cool, yeah, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really important that kind of the right ones read many. Yeah. So, you know, we, we were just joking. Um, I remember oh, I haven't got time to write this down because I'm always having to explain it to people and <laughs> thinking, man, I wish I wrote this down. And, and like this, you know, great tools like, you know, Draw.io. Um, yeah, you know, like Confluence. I love Draw.io. Yeah, and yeah. the fact you can plug into Confluence, we're yeah. about Confluence. Um, yeah, and just even cool stuff like, uh, I think like Plant UML, where it's, you can kind of type out stuff and it'll generate. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's really great tools. Yeah. Um, just kind of pick what makes sense for your team. Yeah. yeah. And I like I really like Draw.io, especially the real basic sketch one where you can draw your workflow mm. chart for a process you're doing. Yep. And then you kind of realize once it's visual, you're like, oh, wait, there's like five extra steps oh, that I'm missing it, that it, I need to put it, boxes in for. cases? Yeah. You know, and, like, and then you're like, wait a minute, this was perfect in my head, but now it's on paper. It's, uh, it's interesting. I mean, we're both into like cyber threat intelligence, yeah. right? And uh, Hewer talks about externalization and decomposition. Mm. So getting it on paper, yeah, yeah, you know, it's the bullshit filter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is, and yeah. it's it's also that litmus test of if you can't explain it to someone else, you don't really know it yourself. And so that's what docu 100%. documentation yeah. is that yeah. times ten. Yeah, because yeah. you can't bullshit anything <clears throat> you're writing down. Oh, and, and it's interesting because you know I do architecture, right? Yeah, and unfortunately in architecture. The more work you've put into it, probably the simpler it looks. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of like protocol design. It's it's not when you've put everything into it. It's actually when you've taken the stuff you don't need out of it. That's when you're done. Yeah. But um, good. You know, there's this other great quote I love. Like, um, hard writing makes for easy reading. Yeah. So, you know, how do you edit? How do you take breaks? Yeah. Uh, there's great tools. I use um, an online tool called Crudocity from Magneto. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I actually did some uh, writing training actually through Magneto. Mm. And it's great because you can put a document up. It'll run through some kind of like structure, grammar, checks things. But yeah. it also gives insight. There's a thing called the flesh um, reading scale. Okay. So it's basically, it kind of, it's a... Um, it's a function that looks at sentence length and number of like paragraphs, things like that. Yeah. And kind of gives you like a, a age reading scale. Okay. So, you know, if you're in a stressful situation, you don't want it to be convoluted language. Yes. You don't want cognitive load. Yeah. You want it to be very simple. Yeah. Um, words like congruence and things, right? So, yeah. you know, you want to be able to kind of quickly get the intent of the document. Yeah. yeah. There's a real skill to this. I mean, this is a whole podcast in itself. This, well, is, this is what happened last time, Desi. Yeah, it did. We, and I don't, I don't mind going off track on all these, but it's, it's funny, like, you mentioned that, like, I didn't realize that, but I was talking to another friend who, uh, he did um, training development for such a long time. Oh, yeah. And the way he taught me to, to write, because, like, I was writing on this documentation for him, and he was just like, pretend you're not a, a native speaker in English. Yeah, yeah, So yeah, pretend yeah. that you've learnt your 
2,000 basic words yeah, that your day-to-day yeah, yeah. -day language is in. Yep, yep. Don't use concatenations, don't use long sentences, don't use long words. Yep. What are you writing? Yeah. So I, like I always write as if someone who's learned English as a second language and has mm. to read my technical documentation because yeah. I don't want them going to a dictionary because it breaks their flow. Oh, and a mate of mine, he, I loved what he used to do. He used to say to me, like, I write it so my dad could read it. Yeah. <laughs> so... Um, there's someone who's not They're all in the same industry. things though, like, exactly. it's, su it's such yeah. a good, like, skill to have. Yeah, and, and it's interesting, so, when I was at Powerlink, um, I was actually putting my team on applied network defences, yeah. effective information security writing, because it's such an important skill in yeah. cybersecurity, and, and probably one that we just gloss over, Yeah, we just assume, and yeah. like you said, if, if you're technical or engineering, like, I mean, I'm more comfortable in spreadsheets than I am in Word, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, people, it's, it's really hard. I didn't do an English degree, so no, I have to write an essay. Yeah, it turns out this whole time, oh, it's one of the lizards. Oh, no, it's a small one, though, so we should be all right. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, he's licking his lips, though. So. Oh, yeah. yeah, but um, no, it's it's a really important skill. And, yeah. and I think, yeah, we were chatting last time just about you know, one of the big things at the moment is just training, and like what training to do. Oh, yeah. Um, and I think, you know, in security, it's very much like life learn, lifelong training, lifelong learning, right? Um, yeah. And sometimes you'll pick things up in adjacent areas that is quite useful. But yeah. I think, uh, unfortunately, there's a lot of just hype at the moment. Mm -hmm. And there's probably a lot of training that, um, you know, parts of it are great, but it could be padded out, things like that. And I mean, I've been recommending people to do blue team labs, right? Oh, so, yeah. So yeah. great, great stuff. Yeah. Applied network defense, really good. Yeah. Um, you know, I think we're both yeah, SANS alumni and yeah. kind of like we, you know, we probably wouldn't recommend juniors paying for their own well, SANS training, right? So funnily enough, for those yeah. that are watching this now, uh, the hardly a week that I did for April 8th, if you want to go back and watch, I covered all this. Oh, did you? Yeah, oh, actually, yeah, it, just, it just came out. So I, yeah. I talk about SANS, SANS is great. Yeah, it's awesome. Never, yeah. never buy it individually, but if companies are paying for yeah. it. Oh, and, and I was trying to uh, cost it into my team budget yeah. as like a retention tool, right? Yeah. So uh, I think I've done uh, three, four SANS courses, yeah. and they're awesome. Yeah. Like, I even go back and just reread the books yeah. and still pick stuff up, yeah. but it's a huge investment. Oh, and, it is. But yeah. you're buying like a capsule of knowledge. Is, yeah, yeah, is yeah. The way I see SANS is all these very smart people have yep. condensed. And that's what all training packages are. Yeah, They're yeah, just yeah. condensed and knowledge that you could find on the internet yourself. But And I think the thing I love most about SANS is all the community resources. Yeah. So, you know, I do, you know, OT, Industrial Control System Security. Yeah. Uh, if you go to SANS and check out the ICS posters. Yeah. You know, there's architecture stuff. I've still got some posters up on my wall. Exactly, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. just, I've actually just been putting them up in my new office. So. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I guess the point is, don't feel pressured to drop 10, 12 grand on a SANS no, course. No. like. Um, and you especially know, if you're new, because there's, there's so many other free or good resources for cheap yeah. the, to get you started. I actually think the biggest value and benefit of a science course is it actually saves you time. Yeah, it saves you having to scour through yeah. 10, 15, 20 different resources. It, it is that curated list. Yeah. You know, like really loved um, ICS 515. You know, we yep. both did it back when we were. Uh, you know, when you're in CCX, I remember you doing it. Yeah. And, you know, you get to hang out with Robert and Lee for a week. And yeah. just. Well, mine was just, Kai. Oh, yeah, Kai. Kai did mine. Oh. So Kai ended up being my manager because I worked at Drago. Did you do on demand? Or, I sorry, did, not on demand. I did the uh, live, live one. Yeah. And it was us and a Japanese cohort. So there was me and oh. Zach. And then shout out to Ichi Nose if you're ever watching this because he was. Yeah. Yeah, good mate. He now works for CrowdStrike, actually. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. But it was this Japanese guy that just got like really got involved because they were all quite standoffish. Because <laughs> yeah, like yeah, no, I've heard obviously J Kai's teaching in English. Teaching in Japan's hard. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like Kai's teaching in English. They're trying to like obviously translate some stuff and yeah. Um, but yeah, each nose got right in and was like the banter with me and Zach because Zach uh, was on the course as well. It, it helps so much, yeah. and I think like I've done a couple on demand and a couple in person. Yeah. And in person is just so much better. Yeah. Like on yeah. demand, like if you have to get it done, then I had to because of, um, you know, end of year financial budgets and yeah. things, sure. But if you can do it in person, just such a great way to network, yeah. meet other people. Um, 
you know, they have the Sands Community Nights, really good yeah. stuff. So. Yeah, the Community Nights in Brisbane are actually really good. Yeah, I was actually supposed to do one, uh, and then I got COVID. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Still popping around. Yeah, mate, yeah, I was over, actually went overseas last year uh, for COSAC, so yeah. the kind of SABSA Security Architecture Conference. Yeah. And, um, yeah, literally last day of COSAC. Bum, bum. <laughs> so, yeah, that was really, really great. Yeah. So, yeah, so um, what else do we want to chat about? So I was just looking at the question. There's one about you before the cyber industry. Yeah, so I, yeah, I guess yeah. We'll, we'll jump to your uni days because you're, yeah. you're kind of synonymous with BFL being a brand in Brisbane ah, as yeah. cyber. Kind yeah. of everyone knows you yeah, up here. Yeah. yeah. Um, and mostly around Australia, really. Like, yeah. If anyone says BFL, they're just like, oh, Bruce. It's mad. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, no wonder, you, no wonder you got hired by brand awareness alone. Uh, yeah, mate. No, uh, it's Bruce fucking large. Yeah. <laughs> BFL. Yeah, I'm, yeah. Try, I'm trying to think of like, I can't even picture in the top of my mind, but if there was an ad going on TV these days that was just like cyber, like it, it would be you and just you'd be like, get involved. Cracking a beer, yeah. get any old hair. Yeah. Matter of fact, I've got it now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. Um, but where did, where did this all start? Yeah, so let's it's actually, get back to you. It's actually really interesting because um, it just popped up on my Facebook memories. 11 years ago, I was reading Knapp and Langall, Industrial Network Security. Mm. So it goes right back to uni. So. Um, you know, I finished school, early 2000s, went and studied telecommunications, which actually started in infomechatronics engineering, yeah. which is like robotics. Yeah. Turns out I'm pretty rubbish at mechanical engineering. <laughs> and I just went, mate, I'm out, I'm out. <laughs> mate, we now have children waving at us. <laughs> uh, I got out of mechanical engineering and went to telecoms. Okay. So in telecoms, uh, like tele bachelor engineering, telecommunications, uh, basically three quarters electrical engineering, one quarter IT, so mm -hmm. I did networking, programming, that kind of stuff. And I just remember I was playing around with like Linux and stuff mm -hmm. and I had to do a couple of cyber security units in my degree. And uh, one of them was with uh, Dr. Jason Smith. Um, and he actually suggested I go to a computer security day in 2008. Okay. So in Brisbane, they used to run a joint, I think it was ACS, um, Acer, and another group, but anyway, so 2008, yeah. so I actually joined Acer in 2008, and just recently became a, a lifelong member, so <laughs> been around for a while. Um, and then just had mates <clears throat> that did, you know, technology. I mean, shout out to Overclockers Australia, used to be on OCAU. Oh, okay. Um, and there's a bunch of us now in cybersecurity, which is just weird. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, just using computers, yeah. Linux, whatever. Um, and then, when I went, like, so I did my work experience, worked in the railways mm -hmm. as, a, as a network engineer. Uh, so in that, looking after firewalls, network security. Mm -hmm. I actually remember reading the SANS Top 20. So, okay. so it's now the um, Center for Internet Security, Critical Security Controls yeah. Top 20. Back mid 2000s, SANS, right? And I actually re still remember reading a paper about um, attack trees for SCADA systems. Yeah. And I think, I can't remember who it was. Um, it could have been Schneider. But anyway, but um, so I was always kind of into it. And then I found these things called security conferences. So big shout out to CrikeyCon. Um, actually, it's 10th year this year. Yeah, right. I think I've been to like it's seven or eight. It's, it's the, gone, it's happened. Yeah. Oh, it's happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah it I happened it. Um, I think uh, I was about two or three weeks ago. Okay. Yeah, yeah and it's awesome. huge now. It's like, I think it's, um, it was just short of a thousand people, like 950 people. Yeah, nice. There. So yeah, so I was kind of going to security conferences and as a network engineer, I was like, Bruce, why are you doing this? I'm like, well, as network engineers, like we're like plumbers, right? And if we get it wrong, it's gonna be covered in shit. <laughs> so, you know, I used to go to cons and used to do security stuff. Um, because yeah. there definitely was a dis like I remember yeah, when I first yeah, there was a disconnect between the network guys yep. and the endpoint. It was very endpoint focus cyber security 100 percent, and just more like oh, i don't know they're clouds and they do what they do yeah um <clears throat> and you know things like network security monitoring computer network operations yeah all very foreign concepts back yeah you know back then so yeah i um then actually got the opportunity to work as a network engineer in the SOC for g20 so that's the first time i actually worked in a proper you know, adjacent to a SecOps team. Yeah. Met people like Macca. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so Macca's like the real first uh, computer network operations person I met. Yeah. And it was fascinating, you know, just pulling apart, um, 
portable executables yeah. <laughs> and just like opening up um, hex editors. Yeah. Amazing. And yeah, went back to, uh, actually went, yeah, went contracted for a bit, went back to uni, studied a finance degree and then ended up in the big four. Uh, started in project assurance, so I was probably not that good. <laughs> Uh, and they moved me into the cybersecurity team. So that was 2018. And that's when I kind of went, oh, I guess I'm a security person now. Like before that, I was always a network person. Yeah. <laughs> Who was security curious, if you will. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so <clears throat> then from PwC, worked on the AES CSF, Australian Energy Sector Cybersecurity yep. Framework. And then kind of this whole OT thing. I was like, oh my, oh my God, OT. I was like, been doing this yeah i've been around 15 for a while. Years. yeah yeah we've we've been here um so yeah so uh yeah and i think just being active in the community and i remember yeah. back to when i joined acer in yeah 2008 really um just really felt very welcome welcoming yeah. experience you know and, yeah and now i'm actually the deputy chair of acer and trying to build those experiences for people yeah. and yeah but but yeah so it's been weird um but i i, I quite like you know system engineering and to me, cybersecurity is <clears throat> it's kind of a, a slice through system engineering yeah. of you know, how we understanding risk, how we building mm. cyber secure systems, how we taking whole of life approaches yeah. um, rather than just, I don't know, let's just try and bolt security in. Yeah. yeah. I, when I first started in cybersecurity, it's funny you say that, I hated risk and GRC. D yeah. But then you realize that. GRC is just underpinning <clears throat> underpinning everything I, and I, it's risk. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Like once you can communicate <clears throat> cyber risk within business risk, yep. you feel oh. like, okay, this is where it's at because there's more than just yep. these little pockets yeah. and you can mitigate elsewhere or Yeah, I feel like if you don't do GRC, you're doomed to repeat your mistakes. Yeah. You just you will never you, you'll just tactically stay in a holding pattern. Once you start you know, using the language of the business. So, I mean, I love Sabza. Um, yeah. This is a record, it's taken, what I think, 15 minutes to say Sabza, but, um, but yeah, Sabza's around using the language of your stakeholder. Yeah. Um, and ideally not decoupling opportunities and risks, but to achieve this business outcome, we're gonna manage these risks. Yeah. And I think that's super important. If you, if you just frame it as there's benefits and then there's cybersecurity, yeah. It's too hard to bring the two together. Yeah. yeah. Well, because you see it as there's benefits in the cybersecurity and you see two costs yep. as well. Yep. Whereas yep. if you're putting them together and you go, well, if we solve this problem, here's yep. all the benefits that we get. It, it, and it exactly. actually doesn't cost us that much for all these benefits. Yeah, and yeah. You're like, oh, cool. And, and I love the analogy. They talk about, you know, brakes on a race car. Yeah. So they're not there to make the car slow. They're actually there to let the car go faster. Yeah. And then when you need to go slow, they're there. Yeah. So. Yeah, so no, that's um, it's been interesting. Yeah, so mm. Hmm. bit of a journey. Yeah, yeah, mate. Yeah, I'm gonna jump over a few because we've talked about some really good points, yeah, yeah, which yeah, I, yeah. I want to keep in. So, what has been a highlight for your career so far? Yeah, look, I think <clears throat> probably probably the two, if I can. Working on G20 was super cool. Yeah, um, like, that would have been really cool. Yeah, so I was actually uh, part of the, it was the Public Safety Business Agency. Mm -hmm. So they looked after police, fire, ambulance. And yeah. just, you know, kind of building that infrastructure to make sure critical services can operate. You know, like they look after the triple O, yeah. um, ambulance command, fire command. <clears throat> uh, that was pretty cool. And just seeing all that machinery come together, um, you know, going to like, the police operations center. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was very cool. Nice. And meeting people like Macker and yeah. yeah. The the second one would be, you know, doing the Australian energy sector cybersecurity framework, the AES CSF. Yeah. That was just cool. Like I I mean people might not be familiar with it. What a shame. <laughs> but um <laughs> there's kind of two core it is a parts. Good framework. Oh and it's the C2M too, right? Yeah. So I'm a huge fan of the um, cybersecurity capability maturity model. Yeah. Because it actually gives some guidance on how to yes. build security capabilities. Yeah. It's not just a control catalog. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but the, the AES CSF's kind of three main parts. A thing called the criticality assessment tool. I actually led the criticality assessment tool. So just trying to understand like, hey, like how does the Australian energy sector work? Yeah. What are, who are the critical participants mm -hmm. and how to um, like kind of distribute them, classify them. Mm -hmm. That was quite cool. And then the other two parts are in the framework core. So C2M2 with some modifications and something that's very cool called anti-patterns. Yeah. So I think it originates in a software engineering term, mm -hmm. uh, but they're effectively examples of bad practice. Yeah. So if you do this particular anti-pattern, you're unable to achieve a maturity indicator 
level or a security profile. Yeah. And what's nice about AES CSF is it balances, hey, we're gonna trust that you can build capabilities and manage security. However, there's some backstops here to say, if you do these known bad things, you can't. Can't get full achievement. Yeah, you, you can't yeah. pass go on. And yeah, so for me, yeah, definitely, um, they're probably the best. Um, maybe maybe a, an out, like a, a third if I can. Uh, it was actually very cool being the OT security lead at CyberCX. Yeah. Uh, that's how we met yeah. many years ago. Um, and it was, just, it was really interesting building a national operational technology cybersecurity capability. Yeah. Interesting and stressful. I feel like I had less gray hair. <laughs> uh, but in that role, like, you know, basically connecting with security practitioners and just yeah. trying to get people to be aware of OT, differences of OT. Yeah. Um, you know, you're in incident response, like yeah. how would you do incident response in OT? Uh, that's quite cool, but yeah, yeah. so yeah, there's been, been a lot of interesting stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. What, what about you? What about, what is your kind of favorite? Oh. <clears throat> I don't know, I, I feel like when I hit cybersecurity from my background in the military, yep and I got into instant response. And that was the first time I felt this is my career. Yeah, like I yeah, felt yeah, like yeah, yeah. this is what I want to do for the rest of my life because it's yep. helping people. Yep. And yep. then each job that I picked from there, it's always felt like I'm helping people. And then I've yeah. gained appreciation, like working at Dragos with the AS, AES CSF was a really good framework yep. to work with because I've worked with a lot of other frameworks, not in even OT, but they, they say do this thing, but there's no guidance on how to do it. Yeah, like, create, yeah. Create an asset. <clears throat> and yeah. Even companies I've worked for have sometimes been victim of this, but they they say create an asset management yeah, database. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's your advice just, other than Excel? Just do it. And yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like just do it. Just yeah. collect it. and well, I, like I get that it's very hard because it's such a big problem, but it's. There's not as much guidance out there as I feel yeah, there should the, be in some of those areas. The cool thing in C2M too is the concept of crawl, walk, run, yeah. which aligns with the mills, right? Maturity yeah. indicator levels. Um, it's also very cool in AES CSF. And a shout out to my mate, Stu Goodwin, uh, the one man I bend the knee to in AES CSF knowledge. We, we were both on the project yeah. together. Um, it, I don't know if you, next time you grab the framework core, cool, there's, there's a, a column for contextual guidance. Mm. That's just basically Stu sat down and because he ran about, I think, 20 C2 and 2 assessments for ASC stuff and just basically brain dumped all the, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> or like, yeah. you know, all, all the kind of interpretations and things. So it actually gives some guidance to people on, you know, hey, here's the practice, but here's all the, the background. And, yeah. And yeah, and if you haven't, definitely would recommend to people grab the C2M2 guidance yeah. from US Department of Energy, because it has heaps of really good, like, yeah, there's a, uh, in a what is it, a uh, assessment guide, there's the framework core, mm. and it actually gives a lot of really good background, because I think when you're outside of security, it looks really black box and mysterious. And you get in security and it's still black box and mysterious. Yeah. Uh, but then the more you do, you realize, oh, th this, there's actually, it is all subjective, right? Yeah. It, it, there's not this, like, yeah, you know, we're both engineers. Mm. There's not the same level of, um, I don't know, like modeling or laws, you know, like it's, it's not as yeah. black and white as other things and, you know, I think this is one of the big things I learned as a, as a network engineer <clears throat> coming to security. In network engineering, success is obvious. Like, mm. as soon as the routing table's loaded, <laughs> it's, you know, on the network, yeah. we're done. But in security, it's always shades of gray. Yeah. And it's always, I think I have enough evidence to know that I can probably live with this. Yeah. And it's a very different uh, mental model. Yeah. Yeah. And I think and that's why we got to talk about things like mental health and yeah. cybersecurity, right? Because yeah. it can be very draining. I mean, incident response. Like oh, you guys yeah. are just just on it, just hammering it. Yeah. yeah. And there's different levels of that. Like if you work internally, it's yeah. less hectic because then, but then you're more emotionally invested because it's your oh, network. Oh yeah. Wow. So yeah, I found yeah, yeah. when I like I've never been emotional about an instant response case before, but I've gone and responded with people and the network engineers and security engineers there yeah. are like crying because it's yeah. their, their oh, network yeah, yeah, and they're yeah, yeah. really upset about it. Yeah. And an oh. external person coming in is is more just, 
emotional management rather than responding because they yeah. know they network inside yeah. out. So yeah. it's kind of trying to bring them down from yeah, you kind being of too stressed like out. Coaching them. Exactly. Yeah, 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 you come in, you're like, it's okay. We've done lots of these. We'll get over it. Oh, and there's memories of big, big network outages. Yeah. Um, you, it is helpful to have that external calming influence. Oh yeah, because you just know, come in, even if it's yeah. the worst case I've ever seen, you come in and you're like, it's not that bad. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Three weeks time, we'll uh, be back running. Are you gonna make it? No, you're fine, man. Yeah, fine. it's all good. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Let's go get a coffee first, then we'll sort this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's all this bleeding? Don't worry about that. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. I haven't really thought about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's definitely, yeah. it was eye-opening, and especially, because that's another thing that you don't get trained on as an yeah. instant response. Like, you are, a, for all, like, a better sense of the word, you are a first responder. You are. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. people are part of that. Yeah. And we often forget that in cyber, like, people are the greatest asset that you have, especially internally for companies, because they yeah. know inside out of the yeah. network. But you're not, as an external responder, you're actually not give, not trained in the skills yeah. to handle the psychology of people. Mate, it sounds like an awesome uh, webinar you should do. It's probably a course that I want to do. Yeah, you know, nice. The emotional intelligence of yeah. instant responders yeah. to, to respond in that sense. That would be but, really worthwhile, especially yeah. even role-playing. So yeah. I actually did some, um, uh, when I was at Powerlink, mm. um, suicide prevention training oh yeah and one of, the, one of the biggest things is that you have to ask people like are you thinking of committing suicide yeah and it's crazy yeah the first time you do it military heaps yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I reckon uh, and then you, very... you have very strict rules if they're like even if you're unsure about their answer it's like you do not leave their side like you exactly. get, them, you get yeah. them to medical and you get them to yeah. a professional yeah I still got my card with me with yeah. all the kind of so I was a, a connector so yeah kind of those three tiers of inducted connector and assist and we were basically there just to make sure they had um continuity and, yeah. you know, and i mean i was just gonna say like i think you'd be a very calming influence in a incident yeah. and, and often how like how long is, is it like two or three days from the incident you would come in or so it, 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 it kind or, of depends yeah. um i guess like in terms of the timeline of the incident, usually attackers have been in for longer. So they've yep. noticed it. Like the biggest one is ransomware, right? Yep. So yep. they've been hit. If they have a retainer, we're usually in there the day after. Yeah. So wow. they've been hit at night. We're yeah. in there the next yeah. morning. So that would just be ground zero. And like, they and they would be up all night. Yeah. And then yeah. so you kind of roll in, you're talking with the technical people to start collecting evidence. But yeah. then I'm also talking to the managers being like, what's your work rest cycle like? Like, when yeah, you're giving people yeah, breaks. Yeah, like Panama shifts and stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, if if people are, because people won't leave. Like, managers yeah. will be like, go home. People won't go to sleep. So then it's not, at that point, it's not about sleep management or time management or anything. Because they're no matter what you tell the people, they're going to want to stay. So it's, well, go out and get them food. Yeah, like maybe make them comfortable. Yeah, make them yeah. comfortable. Maybe like go buy some bean bags and put them in the in the break room so people can like have a rest on the bean bag in between yeah, right. shifts, kind of thing. So you kind of get a sense of, especially when you're there in person, you get a sense of what everyone is like, hmm. and then it's talking to the higher ups, being like, "All right, you're spending five mil on your incident. Don't be stingy. Go out and buy breakfast, lunch, and dinner for everyone that's working around the clock." because yeah. then they don't have to think about it. And then yeah. think about making sure you're checking with the people that are working, being like, do you have school drop-offs that you need to mm. do? Can you reach mm. out to family? Like, this is a crisis and you need additional support. And some people don't have family, so they need other people who aren't directly involved yeah, to like go help them. Support network. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's interesting, actually. Yeah, it's interesting, like, because you do yeah. that in the military. Like, your yeah. unit is very cohesive and yeah. will look after everyone. But yeah. when you're in a workplace, it's not... Like everyone, yeah, you like yeah. your workmates, but it's not family. You don't have that same bonding. No, yeah. it's not like that. So yeah. it's interesting during a crisis mm. coming in being like, okay, think about all this stuff and people haven't thought about it. Yeah. That's actually a great tip, I guess, for tabletops. Of, oh yeah. Let's just walk through like logistically, how does this work? Yeah. Who's got kids? Like who's yeah, picking yeah. up their kids at four in the afternoon kind of thing. It's a good yeah. question I always ask. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah there's, I don't know, out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. Yeah. 
All right, so we, we've talked a lot. I'll, yeah, I yeah. think I'll do two more questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, passion projects at the moment. Probably let's go for otherwise, like not uh, outside. Like you're outside always involved cyber. in cyber. Um, do you have anything that you're doing that's not cyber? Yeah, I've re I, I, like, I uh, renewed my archery membership. Nice. So I love archery. Yeah. Uh, but I haven't done it for a year. <laughs> so, you know, I've been a bit slack. I love how I've known you for, what, three, oh, four oh, years yeah, now? Yeah. And yeah. this is the first time that I... Yeah, no, I love archery. I, it's I fun. love doing these interviews because yeah, yeah. I always learn something yeah, new. Yeah, yeah. No, um, it's really fun because I like... Shooting I like things. shooting as well. Yeah. yeah, no, I just like shooting <laughs> yeah. things. No, no, um, I like shooting, but it's a bit more mechanical. Yeah. Whereas archery, I mean, I don't do yoga, but it's just, it, it's just, you get your body and you know, as soon as you've released the um, yeah. arrow, you know if it's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's just something completely different. You yeah. Know? Um, I was mentioning, yeah, I rejoined the gym. I just probably need to get a bit more fit. And just, I've just noticed lately, I'm just in too many cybersecurity things. Yeah. Um, and it's problematic because I like them all. But, you know, I, I was joking as well, I'm probably at 150%. Now I'm like, I feel like I'm now 175%. So, yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think, hard to, it's hard to pull out. Like, you kind of, yeah, yeah. once you start accelerating, it's hard to stop. Yeah. And it's interesting, like, if you're doing one or two, it's not that much more effort to do three or four. Yes. But then <laughs> sometimes. But then all of a sudden you're all, at 25. Yeah, all and spinning you're like, plates. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. So no, but no, archery. Um, yeah, that's probably the main one. Yeah. yeah so it's just nice. Yeah. And um, yeah, just, and then I guess like the kind of cyber stuff, really, you know, security architecture. Uh, I'm also in Engineers Australia. Mm. Uh, I'm also quite active in the trade union movement. Mm. So Professionals Australia, uh, the STEM union. So uh, the incoming Queensland president, uh, I'm not sure if you saw my video, my little, you should join a union. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so people don't know, there's actually a union for IT workers mm. and we have holographic stickers. It's fantastic. <laughs> uh, so trying to get some swag hoodies and whatever. Yeah. But um, that one's pretty cool. And it's just, it's good. Cause you know, like you and I, we're quite experienced. Mm. Um, you know, we, we would have more power, you would say in the, you know, employer, employee relationship yeah but some of the juniors right they're really um they're getting taken advantage of yeah and, you know right. we need to get out there and talk about salary guides and your industrial rights those kind of things yeah yeah that's true i like so shout out to dragos yeah. because they just had they're actually really good very transparent yep. like all their salaries yep. are posted yep. when i was there i could look up any of my peers salaries yep. Yep. and I like that because coming from the military, because it's government, yeah. it is transparent. Pay bands. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like, I don't like ranges for jobs. Like yes. if you're hired to do the same job as someone else, pay someone or yeah. promote them to, if they're doing something else, promote them to a higher role or something. Yeah, yeah, And I remember, uh, I think when I did 515, Rob was talking about kind of the the HR side of Dragos yeah. and, you know, just trying to remove bias and make it a level playing field yeah yeah so, yeah no it's really um, good yeah no it's good and i think we've got to call out people doing good work you know yeah 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 all right so last question yeah if you were giving advice to someone who was outside of cyber and oh, wanted to get in yeah, yeah what yeah. would your recommendations be yeah and i mean i get this a lot um and i'm actually remembering that nice steak we had <laughs> Um, so one of the things start I with think, a good steak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so one one of the things uh, we were saying is it's actually really important to understand if there's opportunities to do cybersecurity in your industry that you're mm -hmm. currently in. Mm -hmm. So say you're working, you know, in technology. Maybe not even technology. Maybe you're doing, you know, you're a business analyst yep. or you know maybe you're a project manager. Those mm -hmm. kind of things. You'll have so much contextual knowledge of your industry yeah. that's super valuable for security. Yeah. You know, you'll know how to talk to stakeholders. You'll understand crown jewels. You'll understand mm. critical processes. You'll understand the business drivers and the business economics, right? Yeah. Super, super valuable. And I think easier to pivot as security in your industry rather than just trying to chase any entry level job. Yeah. And I feel like you'll probably move a bit quicker. Um, but I think the other thing we discussed was, uh, unfortunately, people kind of don't have that financial flexibility, so they're kind of stuck at a pay grade, yes. and they want to move into security, but they don't want to... Drop their pay. Yeah, and that yeah. makes it super hard because, yeah. like, you know, if you're moving into an adjacent field, like, you will have to catch up, mm. and that means you will training and 
efficiency curves, those kind of things. Yeah. So a friend of mine said years ago, like your career is like snakes and ladders, right? Mm. Sometimes you'll go down, but by going down, you'll come up really quick. Well, so, that's, that's yeah. what happened to me. So I was yeah. military, I took a pay cut getting out. Yep. But then because cyber, that entry level is the bottleneck yep. for a lot of people, but there's so many positions that are open. Yep. So my growth curve was quite fast and high. Yeah. So yeah, I yeah. think it took six months for me to earn the same amount that I was earning. Yeah, so I mean, when I went to Big Four, it's a big step back, yeah. but it's a fantastic opportunity to learn. To right? learn, yeah. So through, you know, probably about three years from making that pivot into security, mm. I was back at what I was. Yeah. But, you know, I was lucky, you know, I have kids, my wife was working. Yeah. Um, so I think having that financial flexibility, and that might just be, you know, you got a plan. So if you want to yeah. like move into security, you have to start thinking budgeting, how much money you have, yeah. putting money away. Um, and, and I think this is where it gets tricky because I think sometimes people go, oh, well, you know, I'll, I'll go drop 50 grand on a master of cyber mm. and I'll be immediately job ready. No. And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, kids. I'm sorry. I've <laughs> I was actually reading someone's LinkedIn post the other day saying yeah. they called themselves a fresher. They were UK based, yeah, yeah, yeah. but they were saying I've done a cybersecurity degree and then I went and did masters and I've done these other certifications and they were saying now they're struggling to get a job. And I was yeah. like, of course, like it's yeah. because cyber isn't a field that you need a degree in. Cause I, I did yeah. another video yeah. the hardly week before that yeah. on you don't need a degree to get into this field. Like experience yeah. carries so much more weight. And so the advice of look at your field now. Yeah. Can you do something in security space within your field? Because realistically, yeah. you might be doing it. It's just a job title yeah. thing. And a lot of companies now, you know, they will have a security um, transformation program or yeah. just a security program. You know, is there a way you can get onto that? Yeah. Um, you know, like when I was in the railway and I went back to uni, I actually worked on a cybersecurity transformation program. Yeah. Um, that really helps your resume. So as someone who's looked at too many resumes, um, it, you're trying to balance, you know, uh, cultural fit, skills, work experience. So the more you can kind of tick those different categories, yeah. you're going to be in a way better position. Yeah. So. so yeah, I think probably the key thing is just, if you want to get into it, have a plan for like money yeah. and have that flexibility to move down. Yeah. That'll make things a lot easier. Mm. Uh, think about opportunities within your industry because mm. they, they'll be there. You just need to go look, right? Um, yeah. And that's where going to conferences or things like ASA, Australian yeah. Information Security Association, those kind of things. And networking, yeah. like it'll help, right? Yeah. And there's people that have had to hire people. Yeah. Like it is always in the back of your mind when you're talking to someone mm. and they're like, hey, I'm really keen to get in. I've got this experience, et cetera, et cetera. If you see that resume come across in the future, yeah. like human well, you biases. Face, face the name, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'll 100% go, oh, yeah, I remember that person. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, I think it's an exciting time and a great time to move into security. Mm. So, yeah. Nice. Cool, man. Well, thanks for that. Yeah. All right, everyone. Well, that's it for me. Thank you for joining us this week. Now, all of my content is on my website. And if you really want to support the show, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube and also podcast wherever you get your good podcasts from. But I'll catch you all next time. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thanks for having me. Cheers, mate.